In this video, we're going to be talking about jazz guitar gear. We're talking guitars, amps, picks, and strings. But before we begin, there's a quick disclaimer here. Jazz guitar gear does not make you sound like a jazz guitar player. Buying an L5 does not make you sound like Wes Montgomery. Transcribing Wes Montgomery makes you sound like Wes Montgomery. So gear will make a good player sound better, but it's not gonna transform your playing instantly. 90% of someone's tone comes from their fingers. So with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Let's begin by talking about guitars. The most common type of jazz guitar is an arch top. This arch top is a Yamaha AE1200, and this is quite similar to a Gibson L5. It's got two humbucking pickups, four knobs, a tail piece. It's 17 inches from here to here. It's 17 inches. Some arch tops are a little bit smaller than that, like an ES125, that's only 16 inches. Some are bigger, such as the Super 400. I think that's about 18 inches from there to there. So that's obviously much bigger to kind of get yourself over and play. This is obviously a thick guitar and you can play it acoustically as well as plugged in. Some people like the sound of the, an unplugged arch top. A really great example of that is Joe Pass's Virtuoso album. You basically get a heavily unplugged sound, which is lightly amplified, but the most common application you get for a jazz arch top is when it's plugged in, electrified, and that's what most jazz guitar players use, especially the classic jazz players from the 1950s and the 1960s. The good thing about an arch top is that, of course, you can play unplugged and it still makes a noise. The great jazz guitar player Johnny Smith actually says that he never practices with his arch top plugged in, he only practices unplugged. I love the sound of the guitar without amplification. As far as I'm concerned, uh, amplification means one thing, get heard. So that is a benefit. If you want to practice and not wake people up and keep things quiet, then it's good just to play unplugged and then plug in when you need to. So you've kind of got an option of two different sounds. You've got an unplugged sound, an electric sound, or you can combine both. Realistically, when you're using these things in a live situation, most people will really only hear the, the plugged in and the amplified sound. So that's kind of how arch tops work in terms of turn. Pros to using these, you know, they have the look. When people see me play gigs with these, I get so many compliments saying, oh, that's such a nice guitar. That guitar sounds so good when I'm not even playing the thing. <laughs> Whereas if I'm playing a Telecaster or a semi hollow body guitar or something like that, the compliments will be like, you sound good. I like what you're playing. And they're never about the guitar. So this seems to um, be a, a good example of that people actually judge with their eyes rather than what they're hearing. So it obviously has the look and sometimes you think that people take you more seriously as a jazz guitar player when you're playing one of these things. What are the cons? Well, the cons are they are heavy, I think. They are not quite as portable as using something like a Strat or a Tele. You can throw them in a gig bag, put them over your shoulder and you can go to the gig like that, no problem. This, you tend to have to carry them in hard cases and they're kind of a bit more cumbersome to carry around. The obvious one is, of course, feedback, which is a very variable and dependable con, depending on the situation that you're playing on. So, for example, you could go with a, an arch top like this and you could get feedback and the guitar could be unusable. You'd have to play very quiet and if you're playing with a loud drummer, then it's going to ruin your entire gig. So that can be a massive con of an arch top. Of course, there are ways to get around that. You might want to position the amp in a different way. That can also stop feedback as well, but it's something that is probably at the back of your mind as a jazz guitar player that uses arch tops. Of course, you can buy those things that cover the F-holes as well. They can stop feedback, but they tend to be quite expensive for what they are. Famous jazz guitar players actually tend to tape, they'll put tape over these. I think Pat Metheny sometimes did that where he tape over the F-holes to reduce the feedback. So that's another way which you can get rid of feedback. This is another one of my favorite arch top guitars. This is a 1959 Gibson ES125. Wes Montgomery used to use one of these and there's some really great YouTube clips of Lenny Bro using one of these as well to give you an idea of how these guys sound. This is a much smaller guitar. It's only one inch smaller from there to there. It's 16 inches, but it feels much more comfortable to play than the big arch top. Obviously, there's only one 
pickup, which in this guitar is a P90. It's the original Gibson P90 pickup, which sounds absolutely amazing. It's a little bit more simplistic in how it's constructed. We've only got one volume and one tone knob right there. So that's much more simple because it's only got one pickup. Guitars which are similar to this guitar are the Epiphone Century, I believe it's called, which is probably a little bit cheaper as well, given that it says Epiphone on the headstock rather than Gibson. I imagine, I haven't tried one of those, but I imagine that that guitar probably plays as good, if not better, than one of these. And most recently, more recently, the good in Fifth Avenue is very similar to this. About 10 years ago, they started releasing guitars which are very much like this. And I used to have one, and while that is an okay guitar, if you're just new and you're wanting to not spend so much and you want to get an outstrap guitar, those are okay, but it really didn't compare to this guitar at all, I found, both in terms of the tone or playability. So this one obviously stayed and the girding went. So this is a fantastic guitar if you can find one. You get variations where you can get two pickup Gibson ES125s, you can get thinner bodied ES125s. It's basically a poor man's ES175, to be honest. That's what you can think of an ES125 as, but I really like these guitars. I can't recommend them highly enough and if you uh, see one then don't be afraid to snap it up you won't regret it okay so now let's talk about a proper jazz guitar the fender telecaster fender telecasters are my favorite solid body for playing jazz on i sometimes use strats but for me that lipstick pickup definitely sounds warmer and if you play it through a tube amp it can really get that early jazz guitar tone and i think these are fantastic guitars because you probably already have one, number one. They're very light, extremely portable, and they sound absolutely fantastic. So if you want to start playing jazz and you've got a solid body lying around, then that's all you really need to use. All you need to do is adjust the tone and volume, adjust your pick, and you can get a fantastic jazz sound using these. A great jazz guitar player that uses a Fender Telecaster is of course Ed Bickert. Sometimes he'd use one like this, which had a lip, which has a lipstick pickup. Sometimes he'd use one with a neck humbucker. He pretty much sounded the same with whatever he played, to be honest. But the fact is that he used a Fender Telecaster and he made it sound absolutely fantastic. Some players actually switch between both. A recent example is someone like Julian Large, who started playing an arch top. If you look at all the videos of him, he's always playing an arch top, whereas then he started to play Telecasters a lot and now I think he uses Gretsch guitars. So some players do shift towards using things like these. Obviously Ted Green was a phenomenal um, jazz guitar player who used a Telecaster as well. He used to like old Telecasters and there's some great examples of him getting some amazing sounds. He used to put really heavy strings on his Telecaster and tune down, which gave a really unique sound. Ed Bickett used gauge 10 strings on his Telecaster and he sounded great as well. So th these are great guitars and this is my early 1970s all original Fender Telecaster and this is absolutely my favourite um, Telecaster. I don't think I'd ever part with this guitar. I absolutely love it and um, yeah, that's about my Fender Telecaster. Let's move on to the next section. I hope that you enjoyed watching this jazz guitar gear guide and you found it useful. Please let me know in the comment section below what is your favorite jazz guitar setup? Do you like playing an arch top through a tube amp? Do you like playing a solid body through a solid state amp? What strings do you use? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you think. If you found value in this video, then please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.